Well, welcome as uh, we begin on this journey of um, doing some podcasting to speak to our Lift Church family uh, even more in depth about the things that are taking place uh, here in our house and in our community and um, want to share a few different things that are on my heart today um, regarding um, this past Sunday's uh, opening up of the scriptures and sharing of some vision. And so um, this will be the, the first real iteration or pass of trying to get these podcasts out every single um, Monday moving forward through the course of the year because there's so much that we don't really get a chance to say on a Sunday. Um, so many things that we feel we need to maybe even go more in depth or more detailed on. And so we're trying to use um, the pa- the podcasting platform to do that. Moving forward, there'll be um, more of a conversation that will happen. And there'll also be, we're looking to, to add video to these things so you can see us as we talk to you and and a whole host of other things that we've, we've sensed the Lord moving us towards. But uh, today, I'm going to share a few different things uh, in regards to this past Sunday and my heart for the vision of uh, Lift Church for 2024, the vision to be a surrendered people, to surrender as uh, individuals and as a collective or a, as a community of faith here at Lift Church specifically for the year. And so I'm going to pray, and then I'll uh, kind of just share some of the things that God has laid on my heart, and um, hopefully I'll bless you and give you some more insight and some encouragement uh, for the rest of your year. And so, Lord, we thank you, first and foremost, just for who you are. I'm so honored, Lord, and privileged to get to speak your name and to point people to you. And so I pray that everything that we discuss even on this podcast today and and that I uh, share from my heart would only further cause more and more people to burn for Jesus Christ. Uh, may you be seen above all things, and may your name be lifted above all things. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. And so Sunday, we opened up the scriptures, and we looked first at the greatest commandment from Matthew chapter twenty to uh, to kind of help us to get our minds around the idea of surrender. And, you know, we've talked a few different times as a leadership of, around the word surrender. It is a word that, especially in our society, just doesn't make sense if you're trying to talk about winning or victory or any type of positive movement for an individual or organization um, surrender is, is, is usually seen as a negative um, term. You're not going to speak the term surrender in the way of positive thinking or moving forward towards victory. Yet, that is the kingdom. The kingdom is so different. And um, that's what the Lord has really laid on my heart and, and for us as a leadership is that we should be different. You, you know, the standard of victory in the kingdom is the cross. And just let that sink in for a little bit as you're journeying forward uh, in this this idea or mindset or posture of heart of surrender. Uh, just think for a second of how the Lord uses the cross to showcase His power. Uh, he doesn't use might or strength. He uses humility and sacrifice and and so for us as a Christian people, we, we have to look at our example of Jesus and, and say a surrendered life is really the fullness of the Christian life. That's what the Lord intended all along, that we would find our sustenance and our fullness in Him. And so when we look at the greatest commandment in Matthew 22, that's what He was saying, that we should love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your mind. And really what he's saying is your satisfaction and the fullness of who you are designed to be can only be found fully and completely in me. And we know apart from Jesus Christ, there was no way for us to access that fullness, but God in his grace 
gives us his son as a sacrifice that we might have life everlasting when we believe in him. And so the ability to love the Lord with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind is possible because of Christ. And so in Christ, we have the ability to find the true fullness for our life, which is a life that is completely surrendered to God. The Lordship of Jesus, a Christ-centered life. Um, and you're going to hear those phrases through the course of this coming year, that when we, we use terms like a Christ-centered uh, marriage, uh, we're talking about a marriage that is surrendered to Christ. When we talk about a Christ-centered home, a Christ-centered parenting, uh, when we speak of the idea of Jesus being Lord, I think that that phrase, Lord, that that title, Lord, is something that we should genuinely uh, revere and make sacred when we speak, because it's speaking so much that if he is Lord, then it means so much more than simply a title. It means that we have completely surrendered to him. And as we talked this past Sunday, surrender begins in repentance, um, it is sustained in faith, and then ultimately it is only truly fulfilled in eternity with our Lord. Um, that repentance that began this past Sunday, I pray that all of us live in that posture of repentance, not as one of condemnation. Uh, that is of the devil. There should not be shame and guilt that comes from the idea of condemnation, but rather conviction in the Lord to turn away from the things that are lesser, to grab the only true thing, which is Christ, is a good thing. And so a posture and an attitude of constantly having a check in our spirit to repent of the things that are not of the Lord is the life of a surrendered person. Lord, search me and know me, David would say. And I would say the same thing to us as a, as a house, is that God would constantly search us and know us. And I pray that as we're going through these things, and I'm just kind of sharing off of my heart the depth of this uh, real, the heart that I have around surrender, I pray that we are a people who repents often and early, that it wouldn't be taboo, but it would be normal for us to repent. And I pray that we would repent to the Lord, but also repent towards each other, that when we've wronged someone, we apologize with a genuine loving heart, that um, if there's a, a mending of relationship that needs to take place because of something we've possibly done long, wrong, let us be a people that's quick to repent of those things and not be ashamed, and, uh, but walk in a confidence of someone who knows who they are because they've surrendered to the Lord to where we can truly repent early and often of the things that are not of the Lord because that's not who we are anymore. I'm not that person anymore, and I'm not going to be. And may the Lord use a people that repent early and often. Um, I continue to say that to people. I pray that we would be a people that forgive quickly, and uh, I pray we also repent quickly. And when we talk about the idea of not only the repentance but the sustaining of the faith uh, or the sustaining of surrender in faith, man, it is only faith in Christ that allows us to surrender to begin with. Um, and, and who are we to think that we in our own strength could live a surrendered life? Um, man, it's, it's impossible to do. And so I encourage everyone that's listening to this that you would realize that um, this is not a checklist or religious thing, um, that we're not calling people to a life of this um, feeling judgment or less than because you haven't hit some kind of mark that's religion, that's Pharisees being like a Pharisee. It, that's not us. But what we are saying is that we should live a surrendered life that desires to love the Lord well because it is love responding to love and saying, Lord, here I am. And that faith in the Lord accomplishing his work in me is what sustains the surrendered life that I believe God is calling us to at a, as a house. And as we know, the only true fulfillment of surrender will happen in eternity. We must constantly be postured towards a heart and a mindset of surrender until that day that we get to sing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty for all of eternity. 
And I just want to encourage those listening today as you're living this out. Um, society, your own heart, uh, which Scripture would tell us a man's heart cannot be trusted uh, because of the, the natural selfishness that occurs there. And, of course, the enemy, the devil, who roams around trying to devour and destroy us, are all going to fight against a surrendered life. And it is worthy of you to be mindful and properly preparing yourself for um, there to be conflicts and uh, things combating your attempts this year to live a surrendered life. But in the power of Christ Jesus our Lord, none of those things have authority over us because we are in the kingdom of God, fully under his lordship. And he is in control of all things, and he is sovereign. His power is one of no equal. And so the enemy, even our own hearts, and all of society cannot compete with the power and the authority of Christ Jesus in our lives. And so I want to encourage you and speak encouragement to you that uh, working towards living a surrendered life this year will have its challenges, but one, the Lord will see you through those challenges, and it is worth it. Your existence is to live in surrendered communion with God. That is why we exist, that He is the, the only thing that will fill our hearts with the true satisfaction that all of our hearts desire. And so uh, coming into this year, I've called all of us to begin the year to um, by 21 days of prayer and fasting. Um, I sent out an email uh, discussing that uh, there's a couple different types of fasts that uh, are seen throughout the scriptures. Um, there is the regular fast, which is really going without food and drink apart from water for a certain amount of time as led by the Lord. Uh, there's also partial fasts. And partial fasts are much like the Daniel fast that's found in Scripture where Daniel would uh, abstain from certain types of food and drink and uh, did so in reverence to the Lord and seeking after the Lord. And this is the, the really this is the type of fast that I suggest for most people that will be participating with us, um, because it's just uh, it's more sustainable, especially if you're starting off um, with your um, praying and fasting journey as someone who's growing in discipleship. Um, there, there's just something good about making sure that you uh, kind of tread lightly into those spaces, unless the Lord leads otherwise, and sometimes He does, but. Usually I encourage people to make sure that they, uh, you know, start off um, with more of a partial fast as they get going and, and some praying and fasting. And I just wanted to speak to this moment of prayer and fasting that's happening this year. I don't want it to be religious routine. I don't want it to be something we just um, do because, I don't know, the pastor said so. I genuinely want us to lean in and say, okay, Lord, I want to surrender to you. I want to I seek you with all of my heart, all of my soul, and all of my mind. And I'm starting that by setting aside these 21 days to, to come after you through prayer and fasting with all of who I am. And I, I, I think that with a posture of heart like that, God will truly meet you in a new and, and powerful, fresh way this year that is going to be a catalyst for a surrendered life um, like never before. I, I really believe that. And so may your heart not be one of um, going through the motions when it comes to this practice or the spiritual discipline of, of fasting for these next 21 days, but let it be a heart that hungers for God more than for food and for things of this world. Let that be the case. And, um, you know, fasting is new for many people. And so um, I, I'm, 
I'm going to try to do my best to share a few different thoughts when it comes to fasting. Uh, I actually have a couple books that I'm going to even maybe mention to you um, that are good reading in, in regards to prayer, in regards to fasting as you go through this. I, I always recommend that people uh, check out Richard Foster's book, Celebration of Discipline. It's a good book for those on the discipleship journey in regards to spiritual formation. Um, it's a classic. Um, many uh, people have, have read it through the years. Uh, in that book, there is um, even a chapter on fasting specifically and the spiritual discipline of fasting. And so that's always a good one to, to um, put in your repertoire of books that you might be reading across these next 21 days or even through the course of this year. Um, I had a book that really helped me um, when I was learning about biblical fasts, and it's a book called Fasting for Spiritual Breakthrough. Uh, it's by a person named Elmer Towns. It's a guide to nine biblical fasts. Um, don't I can't say that I fully agree with everything in the book. I'm not really championing that. But it really breaks down different approaches to fasting that the Scripture shows. And I love some of the language that the book starts with. Actually, I'd, I'd like to read a few little excerpts from the first chapter. It says things like this in the book. Um, the author would say, it's important to note that religious practices such as fasting are less important than doing God's will. And I just, I love this approach that this author takes. He, he goes on to say, he says, fasting is not an end in itself. It is a means by which we can worship the Lord and submit ourselves in humility to him. The author says, we fast and pray for results, but the results are in God's hands. One of the greatest spiritual benefits of fasting is becoming more attentive to God. And that is really the heart behind fasting. Fasting is a physical discipline that is um, seeking after the spiritual growth that can only come from setting aside things of the flesh. And so there's a couple different books that I think are good. Um, a few others that I mentioned maybe on this podcast and uh, for this moment are, I read last year, we did a fast, I read Chris Hodge's books, uh, our book on uh, called Pray First, and it's about the transformative power of a life built on prayer. And so during our 21 days of fasting at the beginning of 2023, I read his book, and it's a really good book, simple and a good approach to just understanding prayer as a natural function of your life as a Christian, not an add-on, but um, a, a piece of life that is a part of the whole of who you are at all times we're praying. Um, and then, oh man, there's this great book. It's, um, it's actually called A Handbook to Prayer. And it's from an author named Kenneth Boa. He, I, I found this book from a friend of mine who I would pray around him as a young man. And he, he was a, a youth pastor that I, I was a youth pastor alongside of for many years. And he prayed so well. I was like, how do you pray so good? You just, you, your, your prayers make mine seem so less than. And of course, this was my immaturity as a Christian thinking that, Certain prayers are better than others, but it was, it was. I was so amazed by his prayers, and he said, "Mike is this book called the Handbook to Prayer by Kenneth Boa, and the subtitle for this book is Praying the Scriptures Back to God." And the book uses the framework of the Lord's Prayer, but then um, kind of guides the reader along through uh, different kind of. It's it's liturgical in nature, but it. It's the idea of when you pray, you pray the scriptures. And so my friend would be praying, and I would think he'd be praying so beautifully, and all he would be praying is, for instance, he'd pray like Isaiah 43 over a person's life. <laughs> and I thought it was his words, but he was praying the scriptures back to God over different situations. And there's so much power in that, so much power in it, and I highly recommend that. I've actually given that book uh, to people as gifts, um, as a gift before and so check that book out. It's not easy to find. I'll tell you that. It's it's kind of hard to find. And I think some copies now, the leather-bound version of that can go for upwards of $9,900. So um, another classic and some other things I'll mention in this moment are 
um, uh, people are familiar with Mark Batterson's The Circle Maker. It's a great book on prayer and praying. Uh, circles around situations and aspects of your life. Uh, I always make sure that I recommend uh, that book as well. And um, uh, so, yeah. Anyways, when it comes to some references, I would encourage you to look into the, those as you move forward um, with your fasting and prayer journey. A few other things when it comes to just the practicals of our house and some encouragement that I'm trying to speak to everyone is we're going to do this all year long. I I think that uh, I, I, I just feel in my heart that the Lord is calling us to not just do the routines of starting a year with 21-day fast that are common, but to go further, um, to do it every single month. And we will do 21 days of um, prayer and fasting every single month. We will do it a little different than we're doing in January. You'll be able to register for the fast starting in February. And the reason is, is um, we won't um, be communicating to the whole church some of the things that we'll be communicating to just those that are registered to pray and fast. And so we're going to ask you to do certain things. We're going to ask you to pray in certain ways. And you might not fast the whole 21 days. Some people will do three days of the 21 days. And we'll have some specific things that we're going to have for those people. Some people are going to fast for the first seven days of the 21 days, uh, so on and so forth. And and that's fine. There, it is okay to only participate for three days for the full 21, or maybe you're going to do seven we're going to have direction for each level or aspect of those that will be participating. And we're going to pray for things like our nation. Uh, this year is a year where elections are happening and, and our nation needs prayer and it needs us to diligently seek the Lord and intercede through intercessory prayer and fasting for our nation and its leaders. Uh, we're going to maybe have you intercede when school starts later this fall. You're going to specifically be interceding for our school systems and our teachers and faculty members, for all of our students, and and a host of other different kind of things. These are just a, a little bit of a highlight, but uh, you can get the idea of why we want you to register so we can directly talk to those that are fasting and praying through the month of February with us, because there's going to be things that we as a leadership are going to ask you to pray with and for us uh, over and about. And so uh, please, if, if God leads you to participate in those moments, please do so. And our heart is, is we're going to begin every single month as we have been doing with our Lift Jesus Nights of Worship. And of course, Lifting Jesus is Lift not being the title of our church, but Lift the Action of. We want to Lift Jesus the action of lifting the name of Jesus during those nights in worship. And so we're going to encourage people to participate in that. So you're going to start the month with these moments of worship, and then we're going to have prayer and fasting all month long. And we're in the works right now of putting together moments where when we go onto the Clubhouse platform, we're going to be praying on there as well. So not only will we be doing Scripture reading, but please be on the lookout and make sure you start to get familiar with the Clubhouse platform because we're going to use that platform for us to have moments of corporate gatherings on a digital space, which is super exciting for me. And so we're going to go on to the Clubhouse platform. We'll have people that will be uh, kind of designated as leaders that will be leading this intercessory prayer moment. People will tune in to that moment and pray with us wherever they find themselves. And then they'll be able to put in the chat prayer requests uh, of things that they need prayer for or they're interceding for in prayer and would like for us to join with them in. And uh, as always, and I don't know how many are familiar with this, but this is a good thing maybe to kind of help to end my time with you um, this week, is uh, every morning, 7.30 to 9.30 in our sanctuary, in conjunction with Jesus Church, which is the Slavic church that also shares the church space with us, uh, we have prayer in our sanctuary. And I encourage anybody and everybody that would like to participate in these physical corporate moments of prayer 
not a digital moment, but uh, actually being in the room with us um, to join us 7.30 to 9.30. And I've been asking people, I put it in my email too, if you can't even be here physically in those moments, would you in your mind begin to pray 7.30 to 9.30 a.m. Monday through Friday with us? Um, just wherever you find yourself, I think there's something powerful about even if we're not all physically present, we're all spiritually in one heart, one mind, and one accord, praying for Lift Church, praying for the city of Venice, Florida, praying for the future of uh, ministry in this space, and then ultimately glorifying and lifting and praising the name of Jesus Christ together in unison through prayer. And so that's kind of really what I have for you today and this week. As we move forward next week, I'm going to have a guest with me, and we're going to be uh, kind of unpacking next week's sermon and time together and just the heart behind uh, the content that will come out of our Sunday gathering. Um, I'm excited for it. I ask that you would kind of tune into that. Be with us. Pray for us. Um, whatever it looks like for the next iterations and kind of phases of sending out this content and communication to our people and to our community, uh, we want to do well with it. And so just ask uh, the Lord to be with us. I ask that you would have grace on us as we try to refine this and make this better. Um, would you, in your life, wherever you find yourself, work diligently to lift the name of Jesus above everything else? This is what it means to be someone who attends Lift Church. That when you call yourself an attendee of Lift Church, you are lifting the name of Jesus above everything else in every aspect of society. And so please, uh, wherever you find yourself today, do that. If you're a husband, lift Jesus up in your home. If you're at work, lift Jesus up in your workspace. If you're a student, lift Jesus up in your space there at school or on campus and live it out every aspect, whatever that looks like, wherever you find yourself. May the whole world know the name of Jesus and profess him as Lord. Uh, I thank you uh, for your time today, and I look forward to many more moments through the course of this year and many more people on these moments of being a, a podcast now as Lift Church. So, Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for the moments of just chatting further about a surrendered life. Uh, Lord, use my humble attempts to encourage people in the faith. And I ask that you would multiply, uh, Lord, the things that you are doing in our house in a manner that you see fit. Let things uh, grow and expand in our hearts, Lord, that Jesus consumes more of who we are at the end of every single day. I ask, Lord, that you would use the Holy Spirit to continue to refine us to look more like our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you the glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for who you are in our life, and we ask that you would go before us in all things. In the name of Jesus, amen. Have a good day. <laughs>